the one that's presented to us is not history. It's, it's all lies. Uh, well, it's not all lies. All of There's it. some lies. I found that too. Lost know. Civilization in Grand Canyon was, wait, Egyptian? The Grand Canyon has held the world in awe for centuries, especially archaeologists who have not gotten tired of exploring it. From hidden caves and fossils of long-forgotten animals to new and rare plant species, scientists have unearthed many discoveries from the massive canyon. Recently, archaeologists stumbled upon a discovery that disproves some of our knowledge about the history of human civilization in the Grand Canyon area. In a recent episode of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, Joe Rogan and a guest delved into this latest discovery that has taken scientists by surprise. What is this discovery that just emerged on the Grand Canyon that terrifies scientists? And how will it impact what we already know or have learned about the Grand Canyon? Let's find out as we journey through this mind-blowing discovery together. Comedian and former television presenter Joe Rogan is famous for the Joe Rogan Experience, JRE show. From politics, philosophy and science, to pop culture and current events, Rogan discusses various topics with guests on the Joe Rogan Experience show. So it's no surprise that we learn of a terrific scientific discovery on the show. This recent discovery is coming from the bowels of the Grand Canyon, one of the largest national parks in the United States. The canyon is the pride of Arizona and the United States. It is 277 miles long, 18 miles wide, and bigger than the state of Rhode Island. Spread across 1,904 square miles, the position of the canyon provides tourists with a wide view of the Colorado River to the west. While these facts sound exciting, they are almost nothing compared to this latest unveiled discovery deep inside the mystic caves of the Grand Canyon. Would you be amazed if you learned that Egyptians once lived in Ohio? This was the revelation shared during a JRE episode. In an interview with African-American media personality Hotep Jesus, it became known that Europeans weren't the only explorers we had in ancient times. Ancient Egyptians had a knack for exploring the world that was known to them, and even that which was unknown, and one of their exploration journeys might have led them to modern-day Ohio. An article written by James L. Murphy for the Ohio Historical Society discusses H.K. Landis's description of a hollow brass hemisphere covered with Egyptian hieroglyph. The artifact hints at the possibility of the migration of some Egyptian explorers across the Nile River to North America. The relic has survived centuries since the ancient Egyptians' adventurous journey led them to Ohio. Although there have been some speculations about the authenticity of this hypothesis, it gives credence to the theory that ancient Egyptians once walked along the North American continent, not as enslaved people, but as explorers, checking to see what the continent held. The exploring Egyptians would have likely met with the original inhabitants of Ohio, namely the Erie, Kickapoo, and Shawnee peoples. Like most parts of human history, we don't have this meeting recorded anywhere. Nevertheless, we can be almost sure there was a cultural exchange between the different civilizations. Who knows, there might even have been intermarriages between the North Africans and the Native Americans. The discovery of Egyptians in Ohio, as made known on the JRE show, supports the terrific finding unearthed by scientists in the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is shrouded in many mysteries, and archaeologists have spent decades seeking to uncover answers to puzzling questions about the geological structure. Working with high-tech equipment, archaeologists have spent many years digging through the rocks of the Grand Canyon and searching through its caves, hoping to stumble upon relics that would tell the history of those who once lived in the canyon and how they got there. They finally came across a hidden chamber that bore witness to a discovery that changes our understanding of human civilization, something they never expected to find. The interior of the chamber was like an Egyptian-themed Hollywood film. The only difference was that this wasn't a movie set, but real life. As the archaeologists beamed their flashlights across the walls and floors of the chamber, they were taken back in time to ancient Egypt with the relics staring back at them, waiting to be interpreted. Their excitement knew no bounds as they gazed at the centuries-old relics that spoke of an ancient civilization. They were astonished to spot artifacts that hinted at a connection between the canyon and ancient Egypt. They most likely thought, what does ancient Egypt in Africa have to do with the Grand Canyon in North America? How did these artifacts that pointed to ancient Egypt find their way to this mysterious cave deep inside the second biggest canyon in the world? 
Seeing the well-preserved pottery pieces decorated with intricate patterns and symbols was more than enough to rewrite all that the explorers knew about the Grand Canyon. The origin of the pottery pieces was not in doubt because their design mirrored those from ancient Egypt. Still basking in the excitement of their discovery, the archaeologists began by carefully picking up some of the pottery pieces for further study while they sought a clear understanding of what they were seeing inside the chamber. They didn't have to search for long because they soon stumbled upon hieroglyphs, which made them realize the magnitude of their discovery. The centuries-old hieroglyphs were carved into the walls of the mysterious chamber, with their tapestry and symbols surprisingly preserved over time. Who carved the hieroglyphs? Why was it made? And how long ago was it carved into the walls of the chamber? These were the three questions hanging in the air as the archaeological team walked the length and breadth of the chamber. Feasting their eyes on every relic in sight, it was evident that the interpretation of the hieroglyphs' messages could only be made by more experienced minds. The team didn't waste time in reaching out to another team of linguists and Egyptologists, who arrived at the scene to understand and shed more light on the historical artifacts in the cave. The new team began working to decrypt the messages left behind by the ancient Egypt civilization, who once made the Grand Canyon their home. The Egyptologists pieced together the narrative that the ancient Egyptians left inside the room, which led to the creation of an adventurous story that would blow the minds of anyone who heard it. The ancient Egyptians had left the comfort of their palaces and towns to begin a new life in present-day Arizona. The exploration story deciphered from the inscription tells the tale of Egyptian seafarers who journeyed on board ships that took them across the Nile and the Atlantic Ocean to arrive at the Grand Canyon. The Egyptian seafarers traveled thousands of miles, approximately 12,000 kilometers, on water till they arrived at the shores of a new land that would lead them to the steps of the Grand Canyon. They would meet the existing inhabitants of the canyon and befriend them, which would spark a cultural exchange between the two civilizations. We can say that it was a passion for adventure and prosperity, and a thirst for knowledge that drove the seafarers till they got to the geological wonder of the North American continent and began a new life different from what they left behind. Nevertheless, they still carried their culture and traditions to the gigantic rocks of the canyon. This is not in doubt because they left several pieces of evidence that we continue to explore today. Over a century before Joe Rogan took an interest in the Grand Canyon and decided to talk about it on the JRE show, former U.S. President Teddy Roosevelt had called the Grand Canyon one of the great natural wonders that every American should see. Roosevelt, an outdoorsman regarded as America's conservationist president, first visited the Grand Canyon in 1903. Five years later, in 1908, Roosevelt proclaimed the Grand Canyon a national monument, thus improving the popularity of Arizona State. Roosevelt is one of the main reasons the Grand Canyon is considered a national treasure, and it has been conserved as the Grand Canyon National Park. It is the second most popular national park after the Great Smoky Mountains of North Carolina. It is also one of the most visited national parks in the United States, with an estimated 5.9 million visitors annually. The insides of the canyon would serve as a great location to make thrillers such as Escape Room. This is because the site is filled with an estimated 1,000 caves, yet only 355 have been recorded. Who knows what lies inside those unexplored caves? What do you think explorers might find? Do you think they will find something else that links the canyon to ancient Egypt? While you think of an answer, you should know that only one cave is currently open to the public, the Cave of the Domes. It provides tourists with a safe and interesting sightseeing experience. The cave can be found on the edge of Horseshoe Mesa, about 3.5 miles below the south rim of the Grand Canyon. So you could hike down into the cave to explore what lies there and return on the same day. Before Teddy Roosevelt established the Grand Canyon Game Reserves and tourists started trooping to see the canyon's breathtaking views, civilizations existed within the structure. The first set of humans known to live in the Grand Canyon area is the ancestral Puebloan civilization, which belongs to the Native American people. Archaeological findings suggest that the civilization emerged around 1200 BCE, and scientists have seen reasons to believe that the ancestral Puebloans are ancestors of the modern Pueblo peoples. But the ancestral Puebloans aren't the only distinct culture that once lived in the canyon. The Koanina people resided west of the Grand Canyon between 500 and 1200 BCE. 
The Kohonina are the ancestors of the Yuman, Havasupai, and Hualapai living in the area today. Archaeological evidence suggests that the Sanagua people occupied an area southeast of the Grand Canyon, between the Little Colorado River and the Salt River. The Sanagua people inhabited the area between 500 and 1425 CE, and they may be the ancestors of many Hopi clans. In the 16th century, the Europeans began arriving in the Grand Canyon area. In September 1540, Captain Garcia Lopez de Cardenas visited the south rim of the canyon on the orders of Spanish conquistador Francisco Vasquez de Coronado. Garcia was on a mission to search for the fabled Seven Cities of Chibola with the help of Hopi guides and a small group of Spanish soldiers. Two soldiers, Pablo de Melgrosa and Juan Galeras, descended one-third of the way into the canyon but were forced to return because of a lack of water. The explorers reported that some of the rocks in the canyon were bigger than the Great Tower of Seville in Giralda, Spain. Some believe that the Hopi guides knew the routes to the canyon floor, but may have been reluctant to lead the Spanish soldiers to the river. It would take more than 200 years for the Europeans to visit the canyon again. So far, the park has recorded over 2,700 archaeological resources, which involve only about 5% of the park area. The Grand Canyon's exploration story has taken an exciting turn with the discovery shared on the Joe Rogan Experience Show. Rogan's guest on the podcast episode, Hotep Jesus, brought listeners' attention to the findings of the Smithsonian Institute. The Scientific Institute published a paper in 1909 on discovering Egyptian artifacts in the canyon after various explorations by some archaeologists. Their exploration journey came not long after President Roosevelt proclaimed the Grand Canyon a national park. The archaeologists came upon a mysterious chamber hidden in one of the numerous caves in the canyon. However, this newly discovered chamber is unlike what they have seen before, and archaeologists are still shocked at this new historical find. This discovery shatters the narrative of isolated early civilizations that has been widely held for years, and it means that other possibilities are waiting to be uncovered. No one would have expected the Egyptians and the Native Americans of Arizona to have interacted during those times due to the 12,000 kilometers distance between them. The merging of ancient Egyptian culture with the Americas is still a marvel, and the scientific community continues to be amazed by it today. The effect of this discovery is a renewed interest in the exploration of the canyon, and it has led many archaeologists to Arizona as they seek artifacts that could change what we hold to be facts about ancient history. The Grand Canyon has become a pathway for explorers to return to those early days and bring shattering discoveries that will alter our understanding of human civilizations. If you are wondering why you are just hearing about the link between ancient Egypt and the Grand Canyon for the first time, the answer is that the authorities don't want you to know of its existence. It is why many are just hearing about the ancient Egyptian's adventure in modern-day Arizona for the first time on the Joe Rogan Experience show. Firstly, the authorities have restricted access to the historic Cave of the Domes and some other canyon caves. So, you can't just go to the canyon and be allowed to visit the spectacular cave that takes you back to Egypt. Furthermore, the airspace around the Grand Canyon is restricted, alongside the land surrounding the structure, which is difficult to navigate. You will agree that the authorities are sparing no expense to keep this discovery a secret for as long as possible. They have kept this secrecy for nearly a century now. After it was confirmed that ancient Egypt had exported its culture to the Grand Canyon, another notable discovery emerged from the consistent excavations of the canyon. The spectacular find is a series of interconnected tombs buried deep inside the canyon's rocks. The tombs, beautified with intricate drawings and patterns, house the remains of some Egyptian nobles and their precious belongings reminiscent of the pyramids of Egypt, where the ancient Egyptian kings, pharaohs, were buried. This discovery transformed the Grand Canyon into a vassal state of ancient Egypt. Archaeologists worked with forensic experts to study the tomb's contents and unearth new findings. They found that the ancient Egyptians spared no effort when preserving their deceased nobles, as they had a deep reverence for the afterlife. Artifacts such as amulets, different kinds of jewelry, and even pieces of papyrus were discovered in the tomb, providing us with a picture of the daily life of the Egyptians their spiritual beliefs and views on the afterlife, despite living far away from their home country. Using high-level technology, a team of dedicated specialists carefully restored the scrolls found in the tombs, giving scientists a peek into that era. 
The scrolls can be described as a time machine because they revealed that Egyptian seafarers had braved many difficulties in pursuing adventure and prosperity before arriving at the canyon. They had overcome the danger and uncertainty that filled their journey to start a new life on the canyon and begin a cultural exchange with the indigenous people of the Grand Canyon. The Egyptian seafarers' migration to the canyon led to the integration of their customs, knowledge, and way of life into the culture of the native tribes of the canyon. This latest discovery has birthed new questions for the science community. How much of the Egyptian culture was passed down to the Native Americans? And how much of that same culture has been passed down by civilizations and influences our way of life today? Hopefully, we find the answers soon. While the world is still trying to solve these questions, archaeologists and Egyptologists have been focused on Kincaid's Cave, a spectacular location in the Grand Canyon. G.E. Kincaid, an ex-Marine turned archaeologist, first discovered the underground labyrinth in 1908. Kincaid had worked with S.A. Jordan under the sponsorship of the Smithsonian Institute to investigate reports from John Wesley Powell about the canyon. Kincaid and Jordan embarked on this expedition, which led them deep into the artificial cave. The discovered cave dates back over 3,000 years, with relics of a historic era around the location. It measures 500 feet long and is designed into a cross network of tunnels. These tunnels lead into several chambers that mirror the tunnel cities in ancient Egypt. What's more intriguing is that the ancient cave once stood 400 feet above the Colorado River. However, the forces of nature had weathered it down, gradually eroding its landscape until now 300 feet lower than when the ancient Egyptians built it. The mind-blowing relics discovered by archaeologists include an artifact of pure gold, a lotus flower that could only be found in ancient Egypt. Also, the design of the first cross tunnel where these discoveries were made mirrored the shrines in Egypt's iconic Valley of the Kings. This confirms the idea that the Egyptian explorers replicated the architecture of their homeland when they moved to the canyon. However, the fun didn't stop there as archaeologists also uncovered a golden tablet that can also be likened to a time machine. The tablet documented the arrival of King Zaphonoth in the mythical land of Aslan and his exploits. The exploration hasn't stopped because archaeologists continue to explore deeper into the Grand Canyon and further investigate its depths. And we can trust Joe Rogan to share what they find on the Joe Rogan Experience Show. Who knows what these scientists will come up with next? Extinct animal species, more hidden chambers that hold well-preserved ancient Egyptian rooms and their furniture, or a treasure cave filled with well-preserved gold and rubies from the Egyptian seafarers? Only time will tell. Thanks for watching this video till the end. For more exciting content like this, click the next video on your screen.